Yo, what is up, guys? It's your favorite coach's favorite editor. And if you've been up to date on the NBA's latest draft picks and trades, you might have heard about Kez Yakpala. He's currently on the Heat Summer League roster, and we think he could be a pretty serious player. For those of you that don't know, Kezzy and Zion Williamson go way back. Turns out they actually played against each other in high school. It took place at Washington Community High School and Oglethorpe Incorporated Tournament of Champions. At the time, Zion being the number two prospect in 2018. And just in case you're wondering, RJ Barrett, he had the top Spot. Zion was coming off a 50 point, 16 rebound performance the game before and was about to face off to a relatively unknown high school prospect, Kezi Akpala, who dropped 33 the night before. Little did Zion know, Kezi was ready to give him a run for his money, to put it mildly. He was able to drop 41 points to Zion's 22 and even lead the team in the win for Esperanza 76 to 59 against Zion and Spartanburg Day. This story went relatively unknown until, as it turns out, Zion went on to be the first overall pick in the NBA draft, and Akpala getting picked up in the second round, 32nd overall, when it came back to light that these two had a unique history. Regardless, in that game, Kezi clearly had the more dominant performance, and if you had only seen that game, you would think Akpala was hands down the more talented player. This, of course, might surprise some of you guys, but for those of you that don't know Akpala, similar to Zion, he was also a very dominant high school athlete. Of course, he didn't get nearly the attention, mostly in part to Zion's absolutely unbelievable dominant athleticism, and of course, his thunderous dunks, which weren't Kezi's strong points, but his efficiency, especially in that game, was certainly comparable. This all brings us to an interesting dilemma, which I want to get into too briefly. With Akpala currently ready to prove himself worthy in the summer league, where traditionally players with the draft selection and professional history he's had stand about a 50-50 chance of having a sustainable NBA career, the question we seek to answer is this. Is it possible he's amongst the class of underrated prospects who will end up having a statistically unlikely accomplished career? And just in case you're wondering, we're not going to use the game from three years ago as our sole argument, but it definitely holds some merit in the circumstance. Without sugarcoating it, he was able to shut down Zion and carry his team to an easy win to put it bluntly, which we tend to think isn't a coincidence. He played great because he's a very solid player. Simple as that. But for the sake of this video, let's give him the benefit of the doubt, assume it wasn't a coincidence, and pretend shutting down Zion and his team is something he would have done 10 out of 10 times. Well, if that were the case, he'd be someone to keep an eye on because he might just be capable of shutting down the best of the best yet again. Okay, so how is Akpala doing now? What kind of player is he? And most importantly, does he stand any sort of real chance in the NBA? Well, the short answer is maybe. We're going to let you guys decide that one. The long answer? Well, let's just start with that first question. But before we do that, for those of you guys that are new here, we post content just like this, including vlogs, breakdowns, and in-depth analysis every week if you're not subscribed already. So you guys should definitely consider doing that. And also, if you've enjoyed this video so far, drop a like. It turns out those can really help a small channel like ours grow, but let's move on. So let's get on to that first question. How is Akpala doing currently as of August 2019? So unfortunately, as of right now, Akpala is not going to be playing in the 2019 summer league due to transaction formalities. For those of you that aren't sure what that means, basically we're not really sure either, but so essentially the NBA has a ton of rules in place in order to ensure the association and their athletes. And a set of them were in place at the time which would deny Akpala eligibility for now, despite accounts of him being very ready to play. However, what we do know so far about his more recent history is this. Since the Phoenix Suns drafted him 32nd overall and shortly after a three-team trade including the Pacers, the Miami Heat were able to acquire Kezi, July 7th of this year. And just to fill you guys in and give you some context without getting too deep into it, he played two seasons at Stanford before entering the NBA draft, appearing and starting in 29 games, averaging 16.8 points, 5.7 rebounds, two assists, and a steal while playing 32.7 minutes, while shooting 46.3% from the field and 368 from the three-point line his sophomore year. He was an all Pac-12 first-team selection while also leading his team in points, field goals, free throws, minutes, and starts. He had an impressive and above average D1 basketball career, no matter how you look at it. This brings us to our second question. What kind of player is he? Well, he stands at six foot 10 with shoes on and he has a seven foot two wingspan. He's very lanky and loves to drive to the rim from the perimeter. He also has a 37 inch vertical, which is very impressive by any standard. His offensive game is very strong, but he could definitely improve as a ball handler. He was able to make a large improvement going into his sophomore year in college as a three point shooter, which is a good sign and might be telling of him still having a lot more room to improve. 
However, his free throw percentage was only 67.1%, which is obviously poor, but he should be able to work that out as well. We'll just have to see. And personally, what I find to be the most encouraging and promising aspect of Kezi is that he pulled off a 4.4 GPA in high school, which says a lot about his work ethic, discipline, and grounding beyond his basketball skills. The Los Angeles Times even posted a story on him in 2017, where we found even more positive character traits. His parents were immigrants of Nigeria who had taught him the value of hard work, and unlike most of his teammates over the years who were products of club basketball circuits, he explained he learned the game playing, quote, playing with 30-something year olds at sports clubs and on blacktops, and follows with, I was outside playing basketball, going to parks, and playing in pickup games. I mean, clearly pretty inspiring stuff, which all points to him having his priorities in order. Personally, I think grounding, hard work, and a passion for the game will take an athlete a very long way, and he's obviously got those. So the final question being, does he have any real shot in the NBA? Well, ever since Kevin Durant joining the league, there has been more of a demand for players that are tall enough to work in the paint, but skilled and comfortable enough to play from the perimeter. As we see Giannis Antetokounmpo develop his game beyond the arc, we see the scary and even goat-like potential of an athlete with that size and versatility. Comparing Ankh Paul to Giannis at this point is almost laughable, but could tell you something about his play style if he's able to truly develop into that role. Of course, the harsh truth is that for every player like the former MVP, there's dozens like Perry Jones who had a similar profile, but never panned out. This is certainly an interesting one, guys. I think Kezi is going to be a make or break situation, but as time goes on and Zion most likely shows us how talented, dominant, and ready he is to play with the best in the world, let us not forget that not too long ago, he was humbled by an unlikely Akpala. So what do you guys think? Will Akpala ever make it to the NBA, or will he fizzle out like so many who came before him? As usual, guys, thanks so much for watching. Make sure to drop a like, or just comment what you think, and we'll see you on the next one.